Imagine this. You're a tiler, this tiler, not this tiler, and your job is to fill k 2 by n hallways with 2 by 1 tiles. Your client wants each of these corridors to have a unique tiling. What's the smallest number k such that this job is impossible to do? The uniqueness of these corridors depends on symmetries, which means that if we take one arrangement and flip it horizontally, we get a totally different arrangement. What I'm saying is, our problem is just a complicated way of saying how many ways there are to fill 2 by n rectangle with 2 by 1 tiles. This problem might seem not very difficult to you, and I get it, but I really like this problem since solving it involves a lot of interesting techniques and mathematical reasoning. Now, pause the video and try the problem for yourself. Now let's get to my solution. This kind of problems usually requires a lot of checking and guessing. Because we want to find an answer for all natural numbers n, we'll need to firstly guess the answer and then essentially prove our guess. And that's exactly what we are going to do here. We'll start by checking small cases for n. But before we get to that, let's denote as n is the number of ways to fill a 2 by n rectangle with 2 by 1 tiles. So this is the number we are looking for. So we start by considering a case n equals to 1. And in this case, our rectangle is just 2 by 1 tile. So there is only one way to fill it, and thus S1 is equal to 1. For case n equals to 2, we have a square, 2 by 2 square. And there are only two ways to fill it. We can put two vertical tiles next to each other, or two horizontal tiles next to each other. So s2 is equal to 2. For n equals to 3, we have a 2 by 3 rectangle. And now we can notice that for each case of n, we can put exactly n vertical tiles, and this is always some arrangement of 2 by n rectangle. And this seems like the most natural one, and we'll lose that fact later. But for now, let's get to case n equals to 3. So, as I said, we can put 3 vertical tiles, and there are two more arrangements. We can put 1 vertical and 2 horizontal, and we can put firstly 2 horizontal and then 1 vertical. And these cases, these arrangements are different because of this symmetry I was talking about earlier. So, S3 is equal to 3. And let's do one more case, so we can get more intuition. For the case n equals to 4, we have a 2 by 4 rectangle, and firstly we can fill it with only vertical tiles, then we have 2 horizontal tiles and 2 vertical tiles, then we can have 1 vertical, 2 horizontal and 1 vertical, then we can have 2 vertical and 2 horizontal, and finally we can have 4 horizontal. So, summing this up, we have S4 equals to 5. So, we've checked by hand that Sn, the sequence of the next numbers Sn, goes like this, 1, 2, 3, 5, and I can tell you that next ones will be 8, 13, and so on. And this sequence resembles a Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci sequence, which is defined by the recurrence relation, fn is equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2, where f0 is equal to 0 and f1 equals to 1. And we can see that if we write first terms of the Fibonacci sequence, we get the same sequence. If we start from n equals to 1, we get 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. So, 
we can guess that Sn will be equal to Fn for all natural numbers n. And this is our guess, but our guess is not enough. We'll need to prove it mathematically. And our proof will involve a little bit of mathematical trickery and a mathematical induction. So mathematical induction is a really strong mathematical tool. It involves two steps, checking base case and the induction step. Base case is essentially checking if our statement is true for some first steps. And we did this already because our guessing game was exactly this. We checked that S1 is equal to 1, which is equal to the first Fibonacci number 1. In the induction step, we set some number n and set all the previous cases before n to be true. So we set sk equals to k Fibonacci number for all numbers k smaller than n. And we check if these statements imply altogether that sn equals the n Fibonacci number. Mathematical induction says that if we have a base case and the induction step is true for all natural numbers, then our statement is true for all natural numbers. And that's what we are aiming for here. So in our induction step, we have that for k smaller than n, we have that sk equals k Fibonacci number. And we want to check if this implies that sn equals the n Fibonacci number. So this essentially says that we know that our statement is true for all cases for k smaller than some set number n. So in terms of tiles, I don't really see how this implication can go. And that's why I want to rewrite our problem in a different way. I want to look at this problem from other perspective. As I said earlier, for every n we can set one arrangement which consists of all vertical tiles. So we have a rectangle, 2 by n rectangle, and we set all tiles to be vertical. Okay? And we can notice that in the process of drawing this rectangle, we just draw a few vertical lines inside of this rectangle. Now the crucial part is to observe that every each arrangement, other arrangement from this one, is being constructed by taking few of these vertical lines and flipping them with 90 degrees. So it essentially means that we take two tiles from somewhere from this rectangle and we flip them. For example, we take this one and we erase the vertical line and draw a horizontal line instead. We can take maybe this one and also do the same thing. We erase the vertical line and draw a horizontal one. And that's how every other arrangement can be made. This means that we can ignore the tiles and focus on the vertical lines. So let's mark them. If a line is vertical, we'll write a empty circle. And if a line is horizontal, then we'll write a filled circle. So in this arrangement, we'll get empty circle, empty circle, empty circle, filled circle, empty one, empty one, and filled one. We can transform every tile arrangement into the circle notation. For example, if we take uh, a smaller rectangle, we have a two horizontals and two vertical, for example. We have a filled circle and two empty ones because we have three lines. One is horizontal and two are vertical. So to make the circle notation fully resembling the tile notation, we'll need to put some restrictions on, on the circles. For example, if we have three circles and we have two filled ones, one filled one and two 
second field one, then this arrangement of circles can't be transformed into the tile notation because two lines which are next to each other can't be both horizontal. Each circle represents some action on two tiles and we can't have three tiles next to each other which are flipped horizontally. If we tried to express this notation, the circle notation in the tile notation, we would need to have two tiles here horizontally and another two tiles horizontally here. But these tiles are no longer one by two, they are one by three. So this notation is wrong in this case. And this gives us a first and only rule which our circle notation has to follow. Two filled circles can't be found next to each other. To get some more intuition in the circle notation, we'll write a few first cases for n in this exact circle notation. So firstly, let's notice that each circle requires two tiles to even exist. So for two by n rectangle, we have exactly n minus one circles. So let's start with n equals to one. So when n equals to one, then we have only one tile because our rectangle is two by one. So we have no circles. And since we have no circles, then arrangement of zero circles is equal to one because zero factorial is equal to one. So S1 is equal to one. When we have n equals to two, then we have exactly one circle. And this one circle can be empty or filled. So we have exactly two arrangements for n equals to two. When n equals to three, then we have exactly two circles. So when two circles are empty, we know that these three tiles are all vertical. But we can do more things with two circles. We, we can fill the first one and leave the second one empty and we can fill the third one. Because of that rule where we can't have two filled circles next to each other, we can't do both filled. And this was seen at the beginning of our video. Because we can't have three tiles flipped horizontally next to each other. So this, this one is wrong and we have S3 equals to 3. And let's do one more, n equals to 4. Then we have three circles. And as always, we can leave them empty. We can fill the first one. We can fill the middle one. We can fill the third one. And of course, the left and right circles are far from each other, so we can both paint them. So this is our fifth one and S5 equals to 5. And now I hope you understood fully my circle notation and we can get to the proof. So in the induction step we set some number n and set all the previous cases before n to be true. So we set sk equals to k Fibonacci number for all numbers k smaller than n. And we check if these statements imply altogether that Sn equals the n Fibonacci number. And that we write an array of circles, which consists of exactly n circles. And this will indicate one of the arrangements of the 2 by n rectangle. And now we'll have two cases. First one, we'll say that the last circle is filled and the second case, we'll say that last circle is empty. So these cases are independent of each other and they sum up to the whole case, which is all arrangements, so we can treat them separately. I want to handle the first case first. So we know that last circle is filled, so if we draw an array of n 
circles, we can write that the last one is filled. And this tells us that the second to last circle can't be filled, because if it was filled, then this arrangement would not represent any arrangement of tilings. So the, the second to last one must be empty. So the first n minus two circles are totally independent of the last two. So we can write that there are exactly s n minus two ways to arrange these circles if the last one is filled. And by the induction hypothesis, which is the first segment of the induction step, we know that this number is equal to n minus two Fibonacci number. Going to the second case, we know that last circle is empty. So we have an array of n circles and we know that last one is empty and that's why we can think of the n minus one first circles as totally independent of the previous one. And that's why we can write that there are exactly s n minus one ways to arrange such array of circles. And by the induction hypothesis, this is equal to f n minus one. As I have said earlier, these two cases are totally independent of each other and they sum up to the whole general case. So we can write that Sn is equal to Sn minus 2 plus Sn minus 1. And as I said already, these numbers are equal to Fn minus 2 plus Fn minus 1, which is exactly equal to Fn, which is our statement. And hence, we proved it by the mathematical induction.